and what kind of adjustment is that? Um, it's not really an adjustment. Uh, you know, I played a little bit of outside receiver um, when I first got here. Um, you know, so I mean, I know the entire playbook. So it's, it's kind of an easy switch, honestly. So whatever, whatever the team needs. And for, I mean, for both of you guys, we, we know we know the H back and the X and the Z. The positions are different, but can you just give us a little a little explanation at your position of, of what what is the difference? What are what do you have to make sure you do well at this spot versus the other spot? And if, if anyone's moving from Z to X a little bit, what do you, inform us. You asking me? Either of you. You don't want us always moving. Oh well. I mean, I think like H is like kind of our scat back player, kind of our, you know, um, can get involved in the run game and also um, take shots and outfield underneath. Um, I would consider our Z's to be deep ball, take top off coverages. Um, you know, we try to get those guys uh, some shots each and every game. And then I feel like X is our isolation outside uh, one on one with wide receivers. Hey, both, both of you guys, do you feel like Ohio State's off this best passing start ever in history? Do you feel like the passing game from y'all's vantage point is taken away from the running game and getting it it's basically went almost off the track a couple of weeks ago and stuff? But just what, what's y'all's what, what are y'all's thoughts on that? And do you feel it? Do you feel like it could come back this week, Johnny? <laughs> uh, I don't. I wouldn't say that it, it, it has. I don't know. Maybe it has. Maybe it hasn't. Um, I, don't, I just we just have a lot of guys in our group. I think and is everybody. Coaches try to do a good job of making sure everybody's satisfied, I guess. Uh -huh. you know, um, we, we have to put more pieces in. We're doing more things to get the running game going. So, I mean, it's just, I don't know, we're just trying to be collective in this whole thing and just trying to get everything clicking as well. Have you felt the emphasis the last two weeks on getting it going in practice and stuff? How has that shown up and, I guess, the drills, et cetera? Yes, this past two weeks, um, you see the scout linebackers uh, – coming down way harder than like usual, you know. Just trying to, I don't know, give the guys a better look, more of a game look, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, you see, I mean, it's been a great two weeks. Um, with the bye week last week and this week, you know, just, you've seen guys, they seem more hungrier this, this week. Johnny, when you say that you guys need to do more things to get the run game going, do you mean like you guys as a as zone six specifically or just as an offense? Well, as an offense, you know, okay. as a whole. We, we probably can make better blocks, you know, more blocks, you know, do more outside to open up you know, things for them guys. So, I mean, it's just a collective thing with everybody. Urban said that uh, Chris Olave will probably be more in the rotation with the opening there. Just what have you guys seen out of him that's, that's put him in this position? Uh, I mean, he's living up to the standard right now. Um, he practices hard, um, great practice player, he makes plays, um, able to track a deep ball very well, great hands, great speed. So, I mean, he's just he's just been working ever since he got here. Um, and right now he's playing up to the standard. So uh, there, there's no there's no doubt that when he gets in the game, there's going to be no drop off. They'll do the same. So. I think a lot of people might assume that if there's an opening at X, maybe Jalen Harris would have gotten a shot there. Just from your vantage point, where do you think he is in his development? Um, I think he's on the right track. I think he's going um, uphill. Um, the, his last two weeks of practice have been the best two weeks of practice he's had, he's had since he's been a, a Buckeye. And, um, you know, I think um, they might not be t necessarily talking about, you know, him getting some reps, but I, I definitely think that, um, you know, he's in that conversation for sure. Is Chris officially in the rotation, or is he just expected to play more? Uh, well, from this week of practice, he looks like he's officially in. So, yeah, I, I would expect to see him out there for sure. I know you guys tune out the noise and the outside distractions. But is there a part of you that registers that for years it seems like the wide receivers were blamed for the passing game not getting going and now you're being blamed for the running game not getting going? Yeah, it's all good because everybody on the outside will know what we, we have to do every day when we come in here and practice. So all that is just a bunch of chatter. If you never lived in these shoes, then you don't even know what to expect, you know? So, I mean, you know, you see a lot of that stuff, but it really doesn't matter because a lot of those people probably never played and probably never will play position like this. So. I, I work with Chris Spielman who used every single slight that he possibly could to motivate. Is, is that something that you guys do personally or no? You said it again? Chris Spielman used to use every single slight, every single criticism to motivate him. Uh -huh. You know, he would keep Mel Kuyper Jr.'s picture right above it where he did, did his sit-ups. So when you guys hear stuff like that, do you use that as a chip or do you try to ignore it as best as can? Like I said before, uh, those guys doesn't, don't motivate me to be any better. You know, the guys who I, 
I line up with every day. I go to war with every day and practice in the games. Those are guys that motivate me. So, you know, a critic, they're just critics, man. You know, Twitter is what it is. Social media is what it is. So, I mean, you get a lot of that talk, but, I mean, none of those people have to play in opposition. You know, they don't have to do the things we do. So, it really doesn't matter. Chris, you, you personally, do you register that kind of stuff? Or are you like nah, Johnny? I'm 100% like Johnny. I turn my phone off at the, at the football games, good or bad. So, that is what it is. Do you when do you turn it back on? Next day. <laughs> no, he cut it on that night. His mom beat his butt. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys feel an anger in the team about what happened she at Purdue and kind of an extra chip on your shoulder going into this game? Um, I wouldn't say anger at this point because you got to get over it. You know, guys just know that we have to do, we have to be better um, if we want to get to where we're trying to go. You know, so. I mean, I wouldn't anger probably after the game, you know, but you have to move on. Just like when you win, you have to move on to the next mission. So, I mean, that's just, that's what we're on right now, moving on and, you know, being better than we were. I mean, you guys have been in this position before, right? Like last year with the every, Iowa loss, except, th except this year you don't have an extra loss. And, I mean, I, I know you guys lost kind of in the same fashion, but then I think you guys remember what happened the very next week against Michigan State. Do you feel like that's something you guys are very capable of doing this week? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I feel like everyone around here has high spirits right now. Um, just from the past two weeks of practice, like it's been really good, and I just feel a lot of energy from the team. Um, so everyone has high spirits, and uh, like JD said, like we know what we have to do to get what we want to get. So uh, you know, everyone's locked in. Everyone's kind of you know registered what happened and kind of just locked back in. And, you know, we're focused on you know moving forward. So has this loss maybe questions. been easier to deal with than last year? Because I mean, last year it was your second loss, and it was like, oh well, you know we've got a really big uphill battle to make it back to the playoff. But, I mean, if you guys handle your business, I mean, you're pretty much it. I mean, do you guys have a different mindset maybe after this loss than the Iowa loss, I guess is what I'm asking. Um, Knowing can't... that you still have those things. Yeah. With I mean, I can't really speak just from, because I wasn't at the Iowa game, I had a concussion uh, last year. But just from this game, um, I feel like it was easier for me to get over um, just because um, after going back and reviewing the game, like looking back, we lost that game on our own. Um, offense was moving the ball very well. Um, just we couldn't score in the red zone. We had three opportunities in the red zone. We missed the ball. Um, so if we complete on those those three attempts, that's a completely total total different ball game. Um, we go up at, at halftime, we're up, and then you come back out, and you know we're, we're ready to do what we do. But uh, that was, that was on us. You know we lost that game. So uh, I think. When, it, when you can look yourself in the mirror and recognize, you know, that it's your fault, it's easy to move fast. You guys whacked Nebraska the last two times y'all played them. What, what what do you see about them that makes you take them seriously this week? Where, where do you see improvement defensively, et cetera? I mean, well, we take we take every team serious. You know, it's never it's never uh, you know a light opponent in our schedule just because week in and week out. You know, the opponent that we're facing, we know that when they see Ohio State in their schedule, they're, they're coming to play their best game. And um, we truly believe that. Every single person believes that. Um, you know, so we don't we don't take anyone lightly. And uh, just from a defensive standpoint, uh, they're very aggressive. Uh, their DBs are extremely aggressive. They press. It's probably the most pressure you want to see, um, you know, all season. Um, but, you know, we're ready for the challenge. You know, guys on the outside, like J.D., they, they love when they get pressed. Um, you know, so we're ready for the challenge and, you know, ready to – um, be back on the winning side of this thing, so for sure. And just one really quick one. I mean, how do you guys feel about not having home night game this year? I mean, this is the first I time. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you love it? I'm not a big fan of Well, I know games. you were talking on Twitter a couple weeks ago about having to play a third night game on the road, so I didn't know if you guys were a little bit jealous that like, you didn't get one at home maybe this year. Nah, no, you, get to, you, get to, you still get to play the game you love. I mean, earlier and you get to spend time with your family. Like yeah. He has a kid. I get to go home and play with my son at that time. I'm good. But those black uniforms have the same impact? It's not oh, at yeah. night? We still, yeah, we can still go like swagging. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> no matter what. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks.